Hey all, welcome back to Fire and Water Cooking. I am Darren, of course, and today I'm gonna do a simple rotisserie chicken that I used to make back when I worked in the uh, restaurants back in the 80s. There was a restaurant called Ranch House or Lums in Florida, and they used to make what's called Wienerwald chicken. We're also gonna use the Typher Sink, brand new uh, wireless thermometer system from Typher. We're gonna try it out today on a Wienerwald chicken. I'll be right back. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter, sous vide and chilling from fire and water. All right, guys, like I said, we're going to do, it's a simple rotisserie chicken, and when I was uh, young and just getting into the restaurant business, uh, I worked for a company called Ranch House in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. They also were owned by a company that owned the restaurant called Lums and a couple other different uh, franchise uh, outlets there, different uh, brands. But um, one of the things that uh, we cooked was a chicken called Wienerwald chicken. And the reason is, is because this big company out of Germany I bought the restaurant, the Lums restaurants and the Ranch House style restaurants and they wanted to bring some of their food into those restaurants. There was a big German company called Wienerwald Chicken, you know, pronounced Wienerwald, but it was Wienerwald. And it was a really simple chicken and they had just these, uh, they called it a Wienerwald machine, but it was actually just a rotisserie machine, kind of like you see at Costco and your local uh, grocery store chain. It was just a rotisserie machine that, that cooked the chickens, but it was a very simple rub, but they were really famous for it. It was really only two ingredients that we used to make it with. I'm gonna kind of doctor mine up a little bit, but um, what it normally was was just about a quarter cup of kosher salt and about two or three tablespoons of paprika, and that was it. That's what, that's what we made our famous Wienerwald chicken with. But I did the same thing here, so I've got about the same amount of kosher salt and paprika. But I went ahead and put a little bit of garlic powder in here, about another uh, tablespoon of garlic powder, and about a two teaspoons of cracked black pepper. Because I want a little bit more flavor profile than just salt and paprika. So that's what I kind of made here. Um, I'll put the uh, ingredients down below so you can make it. But what I want to really try out with this, because these um, wireless thermometers are really good for making rotisserie stuff, because there's no wires, and you can actually have your uh, uh, thermometer inside the meat and while it's turning around on the rotisserie, and it's very easy to monitor. So this is the temp sink, temps or Typher sink, okay? This is their wireless thermometer, and it actually comes with a Bluetooth Wi-Fi station here and two probes that kind of go right inside it to charge. So these are their wireless probes, so you got two there. Let me show you here so you can see. They just slide right into the back. This has a little kickstand that you can actually put here. This is your base that will help you um, monitor the temperature and also it connects to your phone so that you can uh, monitor it there as well. Go ahead and just go ahead and take as soon as you take one of the thermometers out it'll tell you what the temperature is and it'll already I already have this set up with my phone really super easy to set up with the type for app it'll ask you what uh, product you want to set up you tell it turn it on connects automatically you pick the Wi-Fi that you want to use it on and then you're done. So as soon as you pull out your probe it'll read it. When you put it back in uh, it might just say the, that it's charging and to pull it out you just need to uh, pull it out and then it'll start reading the temperature. So what I'm going to do first, like I said this is super easy guys. It took me literally about three minutes to set this up. So you take it out of the box, plug it in, it's got a little char charging cable here, USB-C, charge it, turn it on, 
it'll automatically start reading the Wi-Fi, ask you what Wi-Fi you want to use, put, plug it in, and it's ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and start seasoning up my chicken here. So I just took a regular Costco chicken. And one of the things they told us how to, how to do this is we actually just cut a little flap in, the, in your little flap here between your leg and your breast. You cut a little slit there and you just put the bottom part of your leg through it on both sides. And this kind of trusses up the leg, so it kind of pulls them in tight to the side. And you just take your wings and you just pin them back. You just take your wings that are like this, and you really just fold them back so that they stay in place. And this is what you got. I mean, it's just one little chicken. Really simple. You don't need to truss with rope and twine or buy any kind of special... Um, products to truss it up with. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our seasoning here, kosher salt, paprika, a little garlic powder, a little black pepper. And we're just going to put it all over and then we're going to rub it in. That's it. I'll be right back and show you how we're going to stick it on, get it going. We'll get the uh, Typher uh, sink in there to moderate the temperature. I'll be right back. All right, guys. So I got it all seasoned up here. Um, I got it on the rotisserie. You want to make sure you get it centered right in the middle of your uh, grill. I'm using the uh, Monument grill today, the gas grill. Just makes it so much easier for me. So what I'm going to do is take my number one thermometer uh, probe here and I'm going to put it deep into the breast area because that's kind of what I want to monitor the most. I don't want it to go much hotter than 160. So I'm going to make sure I get it all the way down close to the bone. I'm going to take my number two and since I have two I might as well just monitor what the dark meat's doing as well because usually you want your dark meat to be a little bit more done. So I'm going to go ahead and put it right here. All right, that's good enough. So one's going to be monitoring the white meat, two's going to be monitoring the dark meat, and hopefully we can get it to right around 160 or so. I don't want it to overcook. If I get it to 160, the carryover cooking will take it way past 165, so I'm not worried about it. Um, being dangerous or anything like that. As you can see, it's got the temperatures being read already on the uh, monitor here. So 51 degrees for number one, 52 degrees here for dark meat, which is just perfect. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get this on the grill, and I'll be back, and then I'll show you how we're going to monitor these on our phone. I'll be back. All right, guys, like I said, I got it right set up right in the middle. So I got my two middle burners going. I'm going to set it up to right about 350, 360 is where we're going to have this uh, temperature stay right at. All right, so here's the app, guys. The app's really simple to use. You just pick the uh, device, and then you can just click on each probe, and you can set it. It'll actually have little videos and all that to help you set everything up, pick the meat and all that. Really easy. All right, guys, so my... Typher is telling me that the one I put in the dark meat is ready. Remember I had these both set to 159, so it actually started giving me a warning at about 154, telling me to take it off the fire. But I'm going to let it keep going because my white meat's still at 143. That's why I like about having two different probes. I can actually try to get that white meat done a little closer to uh, where that dark meat is. And I don't really care if the dark meat cooks a little longer a little hotter because it's got a lot of fat in there and it's actually going to actually let it r uh, render a lot more so but it did tell me that that one probe was ready to go so let's wait till the white meat gets up a little closer then we'll take it off and see how it looks i'll be back all right guys it's sitting at 155 so it's giving me that warning that you know i have it set for 159 but it's telling me that that carryover cooking is going to cook it all the way down so I'm going to go ahead and take it off, just like it tells me to. So there we have it, guys, right off the rotisserie. 
check that out does not look good perfect color a little bit of red a little bit of char from that fire so the probe in the breast was deep into the chicken so it was all the way up to the bone a lot deeper than the dark meat but then again like I said I wanted the dark meat to cook a little longer anyway so that's gonna be perfect mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna go ahead and take the probe out of the breast no issues at all with it getting uh, too hot or anything I didn't get any kind of warnings like that so it seems that the probes themselves are going to last quite a long time. Go ahead and get the rotisserie off. And take a bite. Of the Wienerwald chicken. And I haven't made a chicken like this in many, many years, guys. So... But we're going to cut a little piece right off the breast right here. Look how juicy that is. Look how juicy. Oh my goodness. It's just squirting right out. It's dripping everywhere. Perfect doneness though. Definitely not dried out. Definitely really well done. I like it. And the wiener wall is just like I remembered it. That paprika and salt. I like my little garlic addition to it as well. But there you have it, guys. The Typher Sink Dual Wireless Probes. I'll be using these in some more cooks, testing them out. I'll do some comparisons with some other of the type that I have as well. But check out the Typher Sink at a link below. Check out, try to make the uh, Wiener Walled Chicken. Look it up on Google. I'll put a link to below if I can find some links about it. But check it out. See if you like it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.